Hey, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We've got a project going on, and what it is, it's a do-it-yourself kit. It's a press brake that's designed to be used with the Harbor Freight 20-ton hydraulic press. You can get those presses $200, not even on sale, and sometimes uh, as low as 160 something So a lot of hobbyists and uh, off-road guys use the Harbor Freight stuff because they, they're not in production and it makes sense for them. And so Swag Off-Road designed it to be used with that press. Comes with a good set of instructions here, and it is, there is some assembly required, so you've got to put it together and weld it yourself. Now, if you've ever bought any IKEA furniture, this is kind of how it comes. It's all designed to be packed nice and tight in a box, and uh, that's so they can ship it, and it won't cost a fortune. So let's get it all out and lay it on the table here. There is one main difference in this and uh, and uh, IKEA furniture, though. And here it is. Yeah. All right. I'm going to take this thing step by step and uh, go through each step. So uh, welding the guide rail rods. These are the rods that the uh, the male or the you know upper die travels on. And so they weld in these holes that are laser cut, and I'm going to open the holes up just a little bit and deburr them so I won't have to just beat on them to get them in there. But the instructions say to tap them in halfway through. So once I get a look, get the holes opened up where I won't have to work so hard to get them through, I'll just tap them in with a hammer until they're roughly halfway through. And that's about right reason halfway through it gives you room to get plenty of weld and then you're going to grind the weld off when you're done. So we've got to get them square though because these are the things that uh, that the ram travels on and we don't want it binding up as it goes up and down. So that one's square. We'll get a tack on it. Just one tack so we make sure everything's cool. And then when I got the other one squared up, I want to eyeball them to make sure they're square with one another. And then I weld them up. I could have just gone around in circles here, but for the purposes of uh, filming and gun angle and all that, I decided to just kind of go back and forth tying everything in. Again, I don't want a much I don't want much weld on here because I am going to grind it off when I'm done. The instructions say grind it off flush like this, and uh, that's because this is this rests on. This is the bottom that rests on stuff. You don't want it teeter-tottering on weld down there. All right, the next step is to weld the top die to the guide tubes. Now, you can see that's a guide tube. This is no chintzy stuff. That's good, like, quarter wall tubing, and it's good square cut. And uh, i got to make sure this blade, though, is sitting square before I do that, and it's not because it's just hot-rolled uh, steel. So uh, i got to clamp it to this little modular fixturing block here to make sure it's good and square. And then I'll just eyeball it from there. I look right down at it at the point, and then just get a good eyeball on it because there is a little bit of slop, and it doesn't. It's not a, you know, precision watch or anything, but it needs to be close. So once I get that all tacked up, time to check it out. Don't want to weld it up without checking it and make sure everything fits. It's a whole lot easier to cut a tack loose and bump things around than it is to uh, cut a whole weld loose. So. So far, so good. I'll weld that up. Now, this first weld here, I'll go ahead and bring it up if you don't. That looks kind of cold. It didn't look nearly that cold from the other angle, but from this angle, it definitely looks like it's kind of piling up. It, it's not quite as cold as it looks. I've got the machine set actually hotter than what it recommended for, uh, you know, for 3 sixteenths or quarter inch or whatever it was, but the uh, you know, just warming it up, not even changing the settings. You see this bead from a different angle looks a good bit hotter. These are guide tubes. You know, these aren't going to have much stress on them anyway. I don't want them to, you know, warp a whole lot and everything. Okay, now the next step is to weld the bottom piece together. Now that bottom piece consists of a piece of high strength steel that's that's broke and this piece of angle. And when it's all welded together, it really makes for a rigid, uh, a rigid bottom piece. None of this stuff is heat treated or anything, but that bottom piece is, is uh, high strength steel and it's pretty stiff. 
Now that notch right there, you want to stay away from that because something goes in there later on. So I welded just about an eighth inch from the end there so I didn't uh, block that notch with any weld. Now I'm going to get two more tacks on the end here. I know someone's going to comment that I don't have a glove on my right hand, but I don't really care. And we're going to check it out again. Uh, the guide tubes are all welded up and the posts are welded from the bottom. And everything's still good. The main thing that's where things are going to change is welding that whole bottom piece out. And I kind of suspected that that thing would, uh, would uh, warp a little bit, cup upward, and uh, it did, but not so much that I couldn't massage it out. I decided after making one kind of long run there that I, I would do a lot of skip welding on this thing and just only weld three or four inches at a time, doing some back step welding where I tie into where I started on each previous bead, kind of minimize warping a little bit as much as possible. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just skipping around, welding about three or four inches at a time. It's going to make for a lot of little stops and starts. But I'm going to blend this weld off when I'm done anyway so that uh, anything I'm bending won't drag on it. And there it is. It warped a little, but uh, again, uh, nothing I couldn't handle later on. Now we're going to weld the all thread into the uh, backstop guide rails. And the instructions say to just cut a slot with a chop saw or something. I decided uh, to use a uh, porta band. And there's specific dimensions on how far you need to let that all thread hang over the end. And basically it's, it's, it's uh, the nut plus the, uh, the quarter inch, I guess it's quarter, uh, bottom piece. And I kind of screwed up there, had a brain fart. And I'll probably go back and fix it, but I just, I'll, I'll explain it later. All right, it, the instructions say an inch and a half in, make a mark and make the cut. Again, I built this little stand for a porter cable porter band uh, a few weeks ago, made a video about it, and uh, walked through that. And for stuff like this, it just comes in really handy. Now you could have drilled, I could have drilled about a 5 16th hole in here, would have done just as well. But just cutting a little fish mouth in there to weld that all thread in to keep it from going anywhere was about the easiest way I could think of. So that's what I did on each one of those and then I ground them off. And where I screwed up is I, I forgot to uh, forgot to leave enough thread hanging over so I only only had two or three threads catching uh, that nut but for the sake of the video I'm driving on. Alright the next step is to kind of put everything together. The uh, Put those tubes on, the, the uh, back stop, uh, stop uh, tubes, the rails or whatever, put the back stop on and then the side stop. The side stop has a bunch of notches cut in it, uh, laser cut in it, for basically just eyeballing uh, even inch measurements uh, in case you don't uh, want to measure. The back stop is mainly for you know doing repeatable stuff. If you're going to do five or ten bends and you want them all the same, you won't have to measure and put a line on each one. And uh, these got these little locking collars, a little set screw on there that you can set the back stop with. And the instructions say to get a little weld right here on this uh, side stop, but I'm going to leave that off for a while. I'm not convinced I need it, and I'm not really sure what I want to do with that just yet. But I'm going to just let it ride in there for now. And then last is uh, welding a little guide tube where the, uh, the ram from the hydraulic jack or the bottle jack goes in. And uh, if you're going to do that, you know, you just need to get a good mark on the center. I like to use little silver sharpies for marking hot rolled with. And that would go right about there. And... Uh, you got to make sure it all lines up. But this is the press I'm going to be using on it. It has like a tapered shaft on it. So I'm probably going to get my machinist buddy who, who bought this press to make me a little uh, adapter there so that that tapered shaft will fit right in it. I like this. He says, it's critical that you support the entire bottom of the press brake or it'll destroy it. Ask me how I know. So you got to follow the instructions and cautions and everything. But after it's all done, it seems like it's all... After, like I said, I put a little, had to put a little heat on the middle while I clamped it down to the table to pull it back straight. 
it won't be any trouble once we get that big press hooked up to tweak this thing and get it straight anyway. But here's what I did. I basically put a spacer in the middle, quarter inch spacer, and uh, clamped it down and bowed it down and put a little heat on it and then let it cool. And that, that, took, all, that took almost all the bow out of it. All right, well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. And uh, when I get the press hooked up, I'll try to follow up with another video.